Building a declarative UI using Compose gives you loads of flexibility around when and where to show components. This is why it's the best way to build adaptive apps that flow with different screen sizes. Now that Compose is also available for TV, Android developers can reuse the same architecture from the adaptive apps to accelerate the development of a native TV app. Jetcaster Sample was originally designed as a sample for phones. But by logically separating the business logic from the mobile view models, the foundation for a TV variant is already there. Let's see if we can create a TV version of Jetcaster. What's unique about designing for TV is that it should be very clear which component is focused, even in conditions where the TV UI may make it difficult to see due to ambient light or the distance to the screen. Unlike touch surfaces, it's important to remember that users are interacting with a UI through a D-pad remote control, and it should always be abundantly clear where the focus resides. Since our TV UI is going to look quite a bit different than the mobile version, it makes sense to build a dedicated TV version instead of expanding our existing mobile UI logic. Fortunately, the engineer who built the mobile app was diligent to follow our architecture best practices for separating the UI layer and the data layer. If your data and UI logic resides in the same module, you might want to first get started with this terrific code lab to learn about how you can tidy up your code base. In Jetcaster, our data layer already has a repository for fetching podcasts with various data stores. The podcast repository uses a coroutine to download its data asynchronously, collecting the podcast details, list of episodes, and which categories it belongs to. This is all written to a room database that is defined by the respective stores. To better understand Jetcaster's UI layer, we can begin by looking at how the mobile module's Discover section of the home screen is built. For this, we already have the existing home screen and its associated home view model. Let's see how things are done on the mobile home screen first. If we dig in a bit, we can see how the data is collected in the UI state, such as the loading state, categories, and how category selection determines the podcast to display in the UI. That data is queried from Category Store, which exists in the data layer that we saw earlier. The view model combines this data into the UI state, which is passed into our UI logic together with anything else that we want to display on that screen. When showing podcast discovery, we can display a dedicated composable with data that is populated in the UI state. On mobile, this uses all the usual components from the Compose Material artifact to show a column containing a row of category filters, row of top podcasts, followed by recent episodes in the category. Our TV UI is similar, but our design is a bit different. For one, we'll be using components from the TV Material artifact instead. But also, the UI is rendered a bit differently with big, bold elements that are easy to see at a distance. We can again define our view model to include only the relevant data for our UI. Just as before, our UI state includes details about podcasts for the Discover screen, which, again, is queried from the category store in our data layer. That UI state is collected from our UI layer, and from here, it's smooth sailing. We can simply iterate through the categories to display the chips and do the same for the row of top podcasts and the recent episodes. This time, however, we're sure to use the composables from the TV material library so they look and work great on TV. All right, this example is a bit simplified because we can, in fact, do more and make great use of domain module to define the use cases that can be shared between modules as well. Great, so we can continue this approach screen by screen with design specifically for TV. Each one is defined by a dedicated composable and is provided data through a dedicated view model. Alongside the discovery screen, here's also the episode screen, where we can make great use of the large TV screen by showing content side by side. And that design language continues to the player screen as well. For navigation, we can use nav hosts, just like on other form factors, together with navigation drawer from TV material. This component is specifically designed for physical input by handling directional navigation, and it animates open and close as focus enters and exits. We've seen how building scrollable containers like columns and rows is identical to mobile. We can use the same lazy columns and lazy rows to map our content, where each content piece is presented with a card. Compose for TV includes several pre-built cards, standard, classic, and compact cards with wide variants as well. And indicators solve the challenge of making it clear which card is selected by giving the selected one a big, bold outline by default. Another key topic for developing for TV is handling focus. Let's take that player screen as an example. 
Users would expect to have the play pause button focused when you open the screen, so playback can easily be toggled with a single click of the remote control. To ensure this button has focus, we first create a focus requester for the play pause button, and we're sure to remember it. We can then go ahead and provide it through the focus requester modifier of the play pause button. And here comes the interesting bit. We add a focus property modifier onto the row with an instruction to select the play pause button when the user enters focus on the row itself. Now, when the outer row is focused, we request focus onto the button to make sure it's easy to pause and unpause. Finally, to set a priority of moving between other playback controls for things like seeking and skipping episodes, we also provide the row with a focus group modifier. When working with TV apps, it's important to test that the focus order and direction of D-pad movements make sense to your users. To recap, we built upon the repository architecture pattern with dependency injection to add a new TV module to the existing JetCaster app. The architecture now fully benefits from three library modules. One that defines shared UI components, another that represents domain models, and a third that provides data into dedicated application modules for mobile, wear, widgets, and well, now the TV module as well. For most TV apps, the three screens we've seen so far are the usual suspects for browsing, details, and playback. You probably have other screens for users to log in, manage profiles or the account, or offer in-app search. We recommend augmenting existing Compose UIs with the Compose for TV library using dedicated TV components with their clear focus indicators wherever suitable, starting with a default behavior and customizing the style and behavior to fit your exact design requirements. For example, you might want to show a feature graphic as a background on the whole screen while the user scrolls through a list of titles. This snippet uses an on-focus change modifier to observe when an item in the row is focused. It takes care to change the selected movie variable, in turn, triggering the background to change too. Or maybe you want more precise control over where a row of card pivots when scrolling. This snippet shows how to leverage bring into view spec to customize item positioning when its focus is decided. You can find these two snippets and the full JetCaster sample linked in the video description. Building for Compose First lets you reuse the same foundational business logic between Android form factors, whether it's conventional phones, foldables, tablets, TVs, or even cars and now mixed reality experiences too. The approach like this one in JetCaster is to build a foundational architecture that leaves the UI specifics inside lightweight view models for dedicated form factors. And that's it. You should now be set up for a running start with Compose on TV. For more information, see the JetCaster sample on GitHub and the comprehensive blog post that goes into a lot more detail about this approach. And of course, check the documentation for the deets. <laughs> <laughs>